The first presidential debate is in the books and was historic in so many ways. The earliest date in history, no studio audience and no interruptions because the mics were muted for the candidate who was not asked a question. President Joe Biden's performance has a lot of people talking, and here to discuss the debate are former Democratic State Representative Lorraine Birabil of Dallas and Republican Michael Williams, a former Texas Education Agency Commissioner and former Texas Railroad Commissioner. So thank you so much for both of you. And so my first question, Lorraine, will start with you. What is your quick headline from last night? I think it's substance versus style. I think it's pretty apparent for anyone who was paying attention. One person just wasn't telling the truth all night. Um, the other person was telling the truth, but may not have had the style points we would have liked. Um, but I think for the most part, the biggest part about this race is that the contrast is clear. And I think m many people know where they're at. Michael. Biden bombed. You cannot win an election in a debate, but you can dang sure lose one. And last night they lost it. I'm glad the, uh, pres the, for the president has a six handicap on the golf course because he's going to have some free time. He's going to be able to use it. So let me ask you, let, let's, let's just talk about last night and this morning. We're hearing Democrats are, pan are in panic mode. They are freaking out. They are concerned. Some of them are saying, look, Biden cannot run again. He needs to drop out of his reelection bid. Are you hearing these things, Lorraine, and do you agree with them? I'm actually not concerned about it. Um, you know, when President Biden chose Kamala Harris as his vice presidential nominee, she is a strong choice, remains uh, doing a great job in that role. Um, and any president, right, they choose a running mate just in case something happens, right? And so I'm confident that um, if she were called to step to the plate, if, he, if that was a decision he made, but I think it's a decision for the president to make alone. But in terms of what we're doing as a country and how things are going, um, this is a person that brought us out of the devastation of the pandemic. This is a person who is uh, actively and um, and making an impact on reducing inflation. And people can see that at home in their pocketbook. Um, and so I'm confident that um, whatever decision is made in terms of what the president de decides that he wants to do uh, will be strong position because at the end of the day, what we can't have, and I think most voters will agree, is another four years of President Trump. President Trump single-handedly took our country down a path that we may not recover from if there's another four years. I have two small kids, one is five and one is two, um, for their future, and I'm sure most Americans agree we can't afford another four years of that. Michael. You know, when you looked at the news shows right after the debate, and you looked at the news shows that had been sort of favorable to President Biden in the past, MSNBC and CNN, all of those reporters there and all of those guests there were talking about what you said that they're going to have to replace the president uh, on the ballot. What's very, very interesting, and last night they two, both of them had different responsibilities. They had different things they needed to accomplish. For Trump, he needed to contrast and compare himself, his administration with that of President Biden's. But he had to do so without being a total jerk about it. And he accomplished that. For President Biden, he had to re reassure Americans that he had the mental capacity and the physical stamina and endurance to be the president. So to talk about what he did thus far in his, in his uh, career as president is almost irrelevant because the question is, can he go forward? Does he have the mental capacity going forward for the next seven months of this term and for four more years? Does he have the physical ability to be president of the United States? And I think last night, voters clearly saw that he does not. All right, I want to play some clips uh, of the debate. And first, we're going to hear the back and forth on border security, obviously a top issue here in Texas. It has been for a decade. And there were various points during the debate in which President Biden lost his train of thought. And I, we'll see that in this clip. Let's take a look. I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. It's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The border, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. 
He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons. All right, so uh, Lorraine, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on the back and forth and on the fact that President Biden did occasionally at some points lose his train of thought. I think this goes back to what we were talking about at the very beginning of this. Um, we have one person who literally lied the entire conversation, talked about insulin, for example, something that got done two years after Trump left office. I mean, that, that's a fact. Uh, we are talking about, on the other side, someone who is honest with you. And I think the American people, we're going to have to make a decision. Um, do we want someone who actually gets results, which is, you know, President Biden? Or do we want someone who's going to just lie to us all day and possibly take us down a path where we no longer have um, a democratic process? Because that is some of the things that we're hearing on the other side in terms of their plan for 2025. Michael. Well, Lorraine, let's be clear. There was hyperbole and falsehoods on both sides. You know, when President Biden says that no American soldier had lost their lives during his tenure as president, that ask the 13 American families who had a loved one get killed in Afghanistan. You know, when he says that no insurrectionists, no terrorists had come across that southern border when there are 10,000 folks illegally coming across that border every month, surely we know that there have been terror who, terrorists who've come across. So there have been falsehoods on both sides. This is not about style. This is about capacity. And he doesn't have the capacity to be the president of the United States. I am afraid that in Beijing, in Pyongyang, in Moscow, and with Hamas in Gaza, that they're sitting there looking at that debate and they're saying, that American president is weak, and in the next seven months, we're going to figure out how we can advance our cause because we don't think he can stop us. We we'll also want to play another clip. This was on inflation, which is also a huge issue. Uh, inflation has gone down. It hasn't gone up as much, but the record inflation was back in 2022 at a record 9%. And so the two of the candidates chimed in on who caused inflation. Let's take a look. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. With the combination, what I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. He also said he inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months. And then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. Where do you think voters are on, on this particular issue? And I actually do agree with the president, rightfully so, right? At the time that he um, was sworn in, um, he was dealing with, we were still in the, in the grasp, the firm grasp of the pandemic. Um, we had a president at the time, President Trump, who told us that the virus was not airborne. And, you know, when we talk about lives lost, you know, let's think about all the people we lost to the pandemic and how many of those lives were preventable had proper information been delivered. Had the president at that time, Donald Trump, not shut down um, and, and got rid of the staff that was responsible for preventing things like pandemics, right? And so when we think about the risk that's here, I think the risk, you know, depending on what decision is made as a country is very clear. You know, you asked a question about inflation and how do Americans respond to it and what do they think about it. I think most Americans, irrespective of what the number is, whether it was 15, whether it was 9, that's not what concerns most Americans when they're sitting in their home. They're looking at the fact that milk costs more than it used to, that gasoline costs more than it used to, that it's harder for young people and young families to buy homes, that it's harder to be able to take care of my family. That's what American families are asking about, and that's what they see. So when the president talks about what the inflation was or was not when he became president, what he did or did not do, Americans know in their own reality that it's too much, that the pain is too great. That's what they know in their own reality. And can I just yeah. piggyback on that? Yeah. I think when we're talking about what voters know in their reality, I think every person in America knows that the economic downturn we face and the collapse that we faced was because of a pandemic that was preventable. So let's talk a little bit about... Uh, well, I'm not so sure if it's preventable. You, I think you, you say that we could have done some other things to address it, but okay, go ahead. Let's talk about abortion. 
Uh, it's become an issue in the campaign, certainly here in Texas. And so the two uh, were arguing back and forth. Uh, the president said that it was a terrible thing for Roe v. Wade to be overturned two years ago. And former President Trump saying it was a good thing because it went back to the states. And then they chimed in on who was more extreme. Let's listen. He's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. You're lying. That is simply not true. The Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only if a woman's life is in danger, she's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. So the question now is, how big of an issue is this going to be uh, in the campaign nationally? I think it's going to be a huge issue. We've seen this uh, on the ballot throughout the country. And for the most part, we've seen that voters in mass are deciding that they believe that these decisions should be left to a woman and her doctor. And so I definitely think that this is an issue that's going to um, play well for Democrats across the country, up and down the ballot, and it's certainly going to affect the presidential election. I think we will agree on the fact that this will be a, a big issue in this campaign. It will be a big issue in, in campaigns going forward because now there is a real issue. I mean, there, 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 there's something real here in front of American voters. But, you know, we have always said that you want to protect that fetus, that potential young person. And that's the position that the president took and that's the position that the party has taken for decades. And so we'll fight this out among the American people. And at the end of the day, you take your case to the American people and one of us will resolve that issue and one of us will win on that issue. The last clip I want to play is just on the character issue uh, against former President Donald Trump. And uh, President Biden hit him on this last night. Let's take a look. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. The crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. The public knows it's a scam. So the question now is, does this, does this hurt Trump? Did he, did the president land a successful punch on, on uh, former President Trump. The rain has gone first on all yeah, of these. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. This, yeah. I would have wished he would have said something other than I did not have sex with a porn star. I think the, the record is fairly clear that that is not the case, that that is indeed a, not, not a true statement. But I don't think it's going to matter in terms of how voters vote between now and the early voting and on November on voting day. They're going to vote about the issues that affect them in their lives and in their homes. And that is going to be the two things that, that were the safe harbors for President Trump during the course of this debate. What's happening on that border and its impact across other issues uh, in the country and inflation in the economy. Lorraine. I think this is definitely a, a tale of two uh, understandings in the sense that um, on the conservative side, historically, has been uh, tried to position itself as the party of morals, right, uh, and the party of decency, right? And I think that the impact that this could potentially have are your kind of, um, you know, values-oriented uh, conservative voter might decide to stay home, you know, or they might decide to come over and, and vote for President Biden because at the end of the day, on one end, we have someone literally who has lied and has continued to lie um, and I won't even say stretch, the tr say stretch the truth, just straight up not telling the truth, and is not a decent person, cheated on his wife while she was pregnant, um, and is a convicted felon. There was a time in the Republican Party that they would never allow someone like this to be their nominee. And so uh, I think that that is going to definitely have an impact on their base. And as far as I want to get back to what a lot of Democrats have been saying, because this is what the headlines are saying, this is what columnists are saying, that it's time for President Biden to bow out. 
And so what I'm wondering is, do you have, you talked about Republicans staying home. Is this a problem for Democrats staying home and for Democratic candidates down the ballot if people are just, you know, Biden supporters who just can't, can't bring themselves to get to the polls, do you worry about this? Um, I don't. And the reason why is because we have a great motivator on the other side, uh, which is former President Trump. I think that Democratic voters generally vote our interest. That's what we do. We vote our interest. And so voters who vote their interest know that Donald Trump is not in their interest. He's in his own interest. Michael. There are two nervous groups of Democrats today. There are those that are sort of within the inner circle, and they see the opportunity they thought that they had to win an election in 2014 is now going away. And there are indeed those down ballot candidates. You know, the last time the three of us were together, we talked about a down ballot candidate here in Texas, Representative Colin Allred running for the United States Senate. If I am Representative Allred, I'm nervous. I'm nervous as hell right now. Because what I need is somebody who's gonna generate intensity enthusiasm from the base to go vote for him and also vote for me as the second name or the second uh, race on that ballot, I need that enthusiasm. And there's not going to be enough enthusiasm generated from the I can't stand Trump. You need to be for something. You cannot beat something with nothing. And right now with Biden, that's what, what Dems have. So one of the things now that Democrats have been talking about is the fact that, okay, if President Biden decides to drop out and not run for re-election, he would have to relinquish his delegates. And then the DNC would have to decide who would be the nominee. It doesn't go right to uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. Democratic candidates who are interested will have to fight it out according to the DNC rules. And so it raises the question again, is somebody in the Democratic Party going to be going to President Biden, going to be going to First Lady Jill Biden, and, and urging them to step aside? And there was a clip last night after the debate of the First Lady uh, congratulating the President. Let's take a look. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? All right, so Michael, we'll start with you on this. What are your thoughts after watching that? It, that doesn't look like somebody who's going to easily give up the White House. Well, I think, you know, within the first couple of hours after a very, very dreadful debate performance, that's exactly what he's supposed to do. You're supposed to come out and, and, and talk about how you're going to continue going. That's no different than the boxer that gets hit across his, his head and almost gets knocked out and he shakes it off like, I'm okay. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Let's wait till we get to Sunday. Let's wait till we get later down the road. And after these conversations marinate about him having to get off that ticket. But how he responded immediately afterwards is what you would expect him to do. Lorraine. I think the average American voter, you know, obviously the ones that are paying attention watch the debate, right? And the ones that are paying attention know that there is a clear contrast here, right? Um, I don't know dis I don't know that there are that many persuadables, honestly. I think this election really comes down to who is going to get their base out and what part of the base is going to stay home because they're disgusted based on character issues, right? Or what have you. Um, and so I think that's really what this is going to come down to. But Lorraine, what I would mention is that those issues that you believe to be or you posit as character issues, Republican voters have always known about those. There's nothing new that we learned last night uh, regarding who Trump is. Both of these gentlemen are known commodities. There's nothing that we learned about his character last night that was different. What we did learn that we did not really know, but we saw it, is that the president is not physically and mentally prepared to continue as president of the United States for four years and seven months. I'll give you the last word. I would just say that the results uh, do not bear that out. Um, the president has been traveling, doing all the things that the president does, negotiating, 
uh, supervising teams and staff to carry out the, the, the work of the White House. And so I think we should look at the results, and I think that's what voters are going to be looking at, the results. We have one president that nearly destroyed the country and led an insurrection, and we have another president who's pulling us out of the depths of that disaster. Lorraine Biraville, Michael Williams, thank you so much Pleasure. as always, and thank you for watching.